Education has become this movement within South Africa and you know, turning years into democracy that people, especially young people, look to it to provide certain critical answers or to answer critical questions rather. It's exciting times to be to be young and to be a member of equal education. Mkanje Ndazi Tiavuya at the same time the never has cause the Aksu Kuber and doing Congress. The bandos will be condensed apart from the position just different. I hope who's over right. When they can end the ballet player for a moment and the movement is cool. They lend on the money by the Congress is where the members get to elect the political leadership of the organization. It's where they get to define what the organization's political and campaign priorities should be for the next three years. And it's also at this Congress where we finalize the adoption of our constitution. It's something that is, you know, really builds a democratic culture and the processes with the organization and you know, pushes us forward to the next three years. Congress allows the, the organization to reflect. It gives equal education an opportunity to reflect and to also ask itself as an organization difficult questions. Uh, where are we going? Where are we? You know, what we don't we don't want to dwell too much on the successes, but we also want to dwell too much on how do we improve. I think Congress is important because it's it's where all um, provinces in the in the equal education movement get a, get a chance to, 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 to meet with each other and discuss um, problems and matters that um, influence our education and the movement as well. So what's basically happening there, people are already in 2018, they're painting a picture of what 2018 should look like and it's up to the National Council together with members to make sure that, you know, that, that picture is realised. We are in the eighth year of our struggle. We know what our modus operandi has been. That at the core of this movement, it has been young people driving the successes of equal education. It means a change in the way that the education in South Africa is. It means that um, People can actually like have a say in what or how they want their education system to actually be. In the Congress, I'm here to vote for the new leadership of the movement. That will lead us for three years. I'm here to build the future of equal education. I'm here to vote for the people that are going to be our leaders, our next leaders. It's important that we, we get equality because if we're living in a democratic society, it's vital that we all benefit from um, this democracy. We, whether you are black, whether you are white, whether, whether you are colored, we, we, we are the same people and we are from, from the same continent. So we must work as brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters, but not from the, but not from the same mother. For me, the kind of political consciousness and, and dedication that these young people show 
is really what our country needs and it makes me feel very hopeful and inspired uh, and very honored to have been part of this movement. Well, I joined the movement simply because I faced my own struggles when it came to, edu to education. And now I can see that those struggles are getting far more worse. So what can I do for the next generation? What can I do for my fellow comrades? What can I do for my brothers and sisters? And then I joined the movement, knowing that this movement is doing a great job fighting for inequality and quality education in the South African system. It's changed how I look. Um how I looked at, at schools around me because at, in my school I don't have any problems with infrastructure and all that but I realized that it is not only about me it's about other students as well who do not get the same opportunities as me and, and I realized that they also need help. The truth is inadequate infrastructure directly affects everyday learning experience. When my sanitation is bad I can't do well at school. When there's no fence at school and I'm not safe, I can't do well at school. When we go without teachers in critical subjects like maths, like maths for weeks, how do we pass? We won't do well at school. This is the narrative of millions of learners across the country who are subjected to inferior education every day. When you are at a higher level, higher education level, you start to begin to feel the substance of education that you receive. You, you feel that you can't compete with your peers equally. You have to work double translating the textbooks. So that's the level of education that we received. It's going to come back to you and haunt us later in our lives when you're trying to pursue your higher education. Well, there is crime. There is violence at home. There are abusive fathers. There is Nyaope. There are all those problems in our townships and in our villages. But those problems would not be there if the big political, the big economic, the big social questions were addressed. What makes Congress very important is that you don't want to elect a leadership and give them a blank check and say, you know, do as you please. Before this, this day, there has been, you know, very incredible discussions happening throughout the province. Each province that sits there they have their own resolutions, they have their own ideas, they have, they have things that they like to say in the Congress so that equal education, you know, they want to influence uh, not just the outcome, but they also they want to influence where this, equal, this movement is going in, in a good way. Now it is the time for us as young African people to take in charge of our movement. I heard Brett talking about like having societies and varsities. And I was disappointed only to hear that there are only universities from the Western Cape. I feel like if you choose to be a full-time student in Gauteng or any other province excluding Western Cape, you're, you are limited. You cannot have much access to equal education and you cannot be involved as much as you would like to. I'm a members, I'm a representative, but we present in our meetings with the little preacher who he is, so that I'm a parent other brothers who understand that who he is. I want to take this platform to get through to all the equalizers right here and now. We are currently using equal education as a weapon. We get in unnecessary fights like and arguments and disputes with our teachers and we expect equal education to just jump in and party in at any stage because you know, ah, I have equal education to come and back me up. We should actually let teachers see from our own point of view in our mission statement that we actually need teachers. We're not here to fight teachers. We're not here to expose teachers. We're here to assist teachers in making the education system better and better. back to plenary, we're going to have a discussion about the constitution, but an informed discussion. So we need to get to a point where we pass you know, a resolution on, on the constitution and we adopt it and it becomes a living document. I 
adoption of the constitution is, is very important. I think it's the key thing that uh, we've come here to the Congress. Because the constitution is a document that guides the movement and the processes that need to be taken in order for this movement to achieve what it wants to achieve. We're now getting into the business of Congress. I believe that everyone has a copy. Before we move to the constitutional issues, I can see that the hands are coming from the Eastern Cape. Maybe the Eastern Cape has got something to raise with regards to credentials. What, what you request, Chairperson, is that each and every other province can see that we have legitimate people or candidates or delegates in this Congress. Um, my Chair, I'm worried we're wasting time. This is a Congress. This is not a meeting. This is not a, a, a political party or what. So can we please stick to the program and get through this and get done so that we can go to sleep. We're tired as we're sitting here. We're tired. And for the fact... Mother! Audits were done. Mother! Audits were too. done. I, I hear you, William, but I don't want a situation where we don't exhaust all possibilities. Because we are dealing with, with the soul of this organization. We are dealing with its heart. We are dealing with the constitution of equal education. We were tasked with coming here and spending whatever time is needed to make sure that we build this organization. Congress, um, it's, 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 it's a man to work on all just that people are not united. We need to find ways to change our elementality scenario and to actually work together because this is all. We're not going to allow a situation where we can't move because people don't want us to move. And delegates are going to engage on this process. We're going to engage on content. We're not going to engage on emotions. So, comrades, are there people that want to discuss this proposed amendment? Togo will be the first one. Gift will be number two. Comrades, thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask all marshals to take the back the mics. Comrades, we need a two-thirds for this co constitution to be adopted. Those that are for this constitution, may you please stand up. And those that are against, you may sit. Comrades, as things stand, this constitution is adopted by all delegates seated here. Amata! Away to! Amata! Away to! Viva Equal Education! Viva! Viva! I'm, I'm currently running to become the General Secretary uh, uh, for the next three years, which is somewhat like a very heavy job, but the interest is not necessarily just filling that position, but also is saying, I, I, I feel that I can contribute uh, uh, with it, provided the membership allows me to do that, provided the delegates here say, we've got full confidence and we're willing to help. I think that's the key thing. You know, we've got human beings there with very brilliant minds. So they're there to, to really engage the process. And, and it's a dynamic process. So you, you also want it to be dynamic uh, because it's fun, <laughs> I guess. Comrades, my name is Buja Boy. I'm from Sismisela Technical High School. But what is important is that I'm an equalizer, a dedicated one. And my purpose is to, is to fight for social equality. And for quality education in South Africa. I believe in equality and justice, and I also believe that education is a stepping stool to a better future. Nothing about us without us is 
So as issues of sexuality, abusing of power and using the resources of the movement very wisely, I take them very seriously. I'm going to make sure that I push the legacy of Steve Biko. I push the legacy of Robert Sibuko. The people who died for Africa. I'll also make sure that equal education produces leaders who are conscious. And I'll also make sure that each and every person in, in equal education is mentally liberated. Africa for Africa. is a loyalty. <laughs> Comrades, I, my name is Tepo Mutsepe. I'm the current co-head of Equal Education in Gauteng. Throughout the country, there's an expectation that Equal Education should continue to contribute to the debates around social inequality, poverty, unemployment, particularly amongst the youth. Equal education, there's also an expectation that it must speak truth to power. Therefore, I would like to become part and parcel of those people at this Congress who will continue that task. Every year, there's a plus minus 550,000 grade 10s that drop out of the system, and only 10% of them go to FET colleges. What happens to the rest of these young people? No one knows. The reality is, if one speaks about equality, you're already getting into a very serious debate there. You're basically saying those that can afford, those that have, must be cognizant that, that there's a majority of people that don't have, and we need to find a way of making sure that the system functions, because it should bother me if someone doesn't have textbooks at schools. Well, you know, it should, should, should make me angry if someone is walking 20, 20 kilometers to school, waking up at three o'clock. It should bother me if, if a child five years falls into a pit toilet. It should bother me even if I've got a flushing toilet. And that's what we're trying to do, get people to start speaking out, but also make, finding ways to, to, to say, this is what we're proposing should happen, and also this is what we would like to do. We also want to lend a hand in that process. For them, all of our lives would be different. The two people I'm speaking about are Brad and Dimitri. Dimitri was the person who took the Norms and Standards campaign to almost every province in South Africa. Today, Equal Education is like a member of Parliament. We're there every time they talk about education, and Dimitri started that. Brad has done almost every job in equal education. When we were at Congress three years ago, Brad is a humble person. We had to like tell him, you are going to be the General Secretary. You don't have a choice. And he's done that job for us for three years. It's one of the hardest jobs you can do. So for what we've all been waiting for, out of all the delegates at Congress, there were 339 people that came to vote. Starting with the chairperson position, Yoliswa Dwane. For the equalizer position, with 124 votes, Butle Boy. For the position of general secretary, Tepo Motepe. Not everyone 
once that position of the GS because it takes a lot of work and a lot of courage to be the general secretary of the movement, especially a movement like this one. The outcomes were very good for me because I know that these leaders um, are going to take the movement and, and, and grow it as, 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 as one. And I just, and I'm so glad that the positions are not on, only, in, only in one province, they're all over. So we can learn how to, 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 to bring unity together and, 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 and actually work together as, 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 a, as, as a movement. Yeah. This happens every Christmas, and when it happens, this is how it should be. People should express their ideas, and for whichever leadership that comes in after, whether it be ourselves or anyone else, they should leave here knowing that there are people within the movement watching them, hoping that they do what is expected of them. So that's tiring. It's been a long couple of days. Hopefully today we'll get some sleep. Hopefully. But I don't think so. I don't. <laughs>